Hey guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to this video. Obviously, as you can tell from the title, uh, it's my birth story. This little guy uh, right here. Um, yeah, so basically I'll just go over every little detail that I can remember about the day that he was born, a couple days before, and just kind of the sort of the, the route that we went with that. Definitely remember this is just my experience. Chances are no one will have the exact same experience. But yeah, so this is our birth story. Keep watching if you would like to know all of the gory TMI, wow, I shouldn't have watched this video, details. <laughs> Say bye. We'll see you in a minute. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Not mommy's hair. This is why moms don't have long hair. Okay. So, it all started on October 21st, which is not the day he was born. A little spoiler alert. Um, it was super early in the morning, and I just, I started feeling cramping. I was about 36 weeks and five days, I think. And so, obviously, I was still early, and um, I was still working. I was having contractions, and they seemed pretty consistent. Like, I started timing them just because they felt more than Braxton Hicks, which are like you know, fake practice contractions. I'm um, not just feeling them super low. So I was a little concerned, but I woke my husband up and was like, okay, this is what's happening. I'm not sure if it's going to turn into anything yet, but like, let's wait and see. I was supposed to work that morning. I worked at a Starbucks at the time. I was supposed to work, I think at like seven in the morning. And I think the contractions happened maybe around midnight or one, and I couldn't really sleep, so I was up most of the night, and then finally I called at like five in the morning, was like, hey guys, I think this is happening, I don't think I'm gonna be able to come in, I'm really sorry, but hey, I'm having a baby, this is so exciting, and so they were fine with it, obviously, but yeah, so I kind of, I wanted to labor at home as long as possible, and we, super long story short, we moved from another state back to California where we're originally from and it was only a few weeks. I'd only seen the doctor that was going to birth our baby once before he was born. So um, I didn't even get a chance to talk to them about my birth plan or what I wanted and anything like that. But essentially I wanted as natural and unmedicated of a birth as I possibly could have, um, at least in a hospital too. So I got together all my stuff. I don't even think I had my hospital bag fully packed yet. So I finished packing my bag and we kind of just hung around for a while. Um, like I said, I was trying to labor at home as much as possible. And so I'm sitting on the couch and kind of just trying to relax and, you know, do stuff and and it just kept getting worse and worse throughout the day until finally, like, they were about maybe three minutes apart. And I was like, okay, our doctor is 45 minutes away. We should probably go. Because um, I knew being in the car would probably stall some of my contractions, make them spread out a little more. So um, I was okay with waiting. So I told my husband, I was like, I think we should go. So we finally got in the car. And we drove to the hospital, and we were ready to have this baby. We were like, yes, today is the day. This is great. It's a little early, but that's okay. Yeah, you were not waiting. Um, and so then we got there, and I'm in the little, you know, waiting exam room. And, uh, they, you know, you, you pee in the cup, you get dressed in this gown, they do some fetal monitoring and stuff. And the nurse comes back in. And I was like, oh, okay, um, here's a glass of water with some ice chips. And I was like, okay, whatever, like, I'll take it. I drink so much water anyway. Um, pregnancy made me th so thirsty. Um, so then I was drinking this water, and the doctor came in, one of the OBs, and was like, so you're not in labor. You're having real labor contractions, but you're not dilated at all. Um, this is not happening today your baby's not ready. And I was like, okay, well, what on earth is going on? And so I basically was told that dehydration was the cause of my contractions, and they, were, they weren't they were Braxton Hicks, like they were real contractions, but it wasn't my body actually 
doing anything. Like, I wasn't dilating or effacing or anything. So. Hey, it's okay. So, that was not the day. So then, false alarm. And I decide to go to work the next day. I walk in, people are like, what? You're still pregnant? How's this happening? I'm like, yeah, it was just a false alarm. Like, dehydration will get ya. Um, so I drank over a gallon of water that day because I was like, okay, well, you know, obviously he's still early. I would like him to cook for a little longer if he can. That would be ideal. Um, because I, I didn't want my baby to be early. Um, and so I basically, yeah, I went about my day. I had some light, like, contractions. Nothing super crazy, so I took it really easy at work. And I was going to stop working I think at 38 weeks, 38, and so I, I was fine with going still, and so, but I just took it easy, and then that day was over, and so, you know, we didn't expect anything to come of it, we were just like, whatever, like, we're just gonna go about our days, and, you know, he, he'll come whenever he comes, so then, the day after that, at 2 in the morning, I woke up, my husband works at a fire station up here in town, and so he was gone at work. And so at 2 in the morning I wake up and there's water everywhere. Literally everywhere, like, like just like in the movies. I know most people don't feel that whole crazy gush of liquid, like it's usually like a gentle slow trickle of fluids. No, <laughs> mine was a waterfall. I woke up and was like, oh my gosh. Now it's happening, this is for sure. And so um, my water had broken and I was home alone and we lived with my in-laws. So I was like, uh, do I like go to their room and tell them? Do I call my parents? Do I call my husband? What do I do? Um, and so I ended up calling my mom. It was like, my water just broke, what do I do? And she's like, you need to go to the hospital. And so I called my husband. And then he's like, go wake my parents up, it's fine, it'll be fine. And so I went up and woke them up. And then we were just kind of were hanging out and Josh, my husband, ended up coming home early from work. And yeah. And so he came home early and like I said, I wanted to labor at home as much as possible, but I also knew that my water broke. So it's not recommended that you wait too, too long. I know even when I called, they were like, come in immediately. Um, I didn't take their advice, but that's not recommended, so do what's best for you. Um, but yeah, so we waited a little while, and like I said, it was 2 a.m. when it broke. I labored at home until my contractions were probably about five minutes apart, I'd say, and they were getting really strong, and every time I stood up, so much water would leave my body. There was so much liquid. You have to excuse my growling child. Okay. So, sorry if the angle of the camera changed. I had to switch cameras because apparently all of my batteries were dead. Um, because I don't have my life together. So, sorry. My husband came home, my in-laws were awake, they were hanging out with me, and we were just kind of in the living room hanging out. I was trying to eat, although I wasn't super hungry. Um, my stomach hurt really bad, and I know that's something that can totally happen, because um, your body's just like, we are doing this birth thing, and doesn't want to focus on like anything else. So yeah, so we were all just hanging out for a while, and my contractions got super, super close. I think I said about three minutes. And they were really strong, like it was really honestly starting to get painful to where I was like, okay, this is, this is what it's going to be like. We finally went to the hospital, I think we got there around 6.30ish. We got there, they checked me, I was, it was, I was definitely leaking amniotic fluid, so I was admitted immediately. I was one and a half centimeters dilated and 80% effaced, which was not what I wanted to hear. I was definitely hopeful that with all the contractions I was having and how close they were, that I would be at least three centimeters going in. But no, I was one and a half, and um, basically, like, I got in my 
labor and delivery room. I got changed into my little gown. I was told that I was going to get Pitocin pretty quick once I got in there. And that was... That was, that was something that I really didn't want to do, and so I said no for now, like, can I wait and see if I can do it by myself? And so the nurse said yes, and I was able to wait a little bit, but I had four hours to progress in some sort of way. So basically, I had to become more dilated in the next few hours. Um, also, I didn't mention it, but while I was still at home, I lost my mucus plug, like the whole thing at once. Yeah, because my water broke, I was losing a lot of fluids and stuff, and so I basically, um, they told me that his cord was being crushed, like pretty much collapsed upon, whenever um, I had a really strong contraction, so then his heartbeat was plummeting, which I've heard is totally normal, but in a hospital setting, that's not something that they want to happen. So um, I was put on continuous fetal monitoring, which is something that I didn't really want. Um, I got one bag of IV fluids, which that was definitely my best option. I knew that it had some minor consequences, I guess. Nothing major. Um, I can always talk about that in a different video if you want to hear more about uh, why certain interventions you know you might want to avoid. So I had to wear an oxygen mask for a little bit. I got these leg compression stocking things. Um, all of it, yeah, all of it. Basically, um, because I didn't want those things, but it was, at the time, what was best for my baby, and the hospital staff, those were like non-negotiable things. Um, as soon as like I got into a position where he was getting better and it wasn't affecting his heart rate as much, and it just wasn't dropping as low, um, they would take me off those things. So eventually, I was able to take the oxygen mask off. I just had one bag of IV fluids. And then, um, yeah, and so I was off of most things, but the only tricky part of the whole thing, like I really wish my water had waited to break until later, like when I was in active labor, just because I didn't like to move around as much, because every time I moved around, I, it was like a gallon of water on the floor. Like it was, it was pretty crazy, and I didn't want to keep making a huge mess, because everywhere I walked, I left puddles. Um, and so I tried the birthing ball for a little bit and um, ended up watching Fixer Upper for a little while, which that was fun. But it definitely was not my ideal situation. But I think at the end of the day, like, it's very rare that people have their ideal birth and that, you know, everything happens exactly how you want it to happen. And so I went in with an open mind knowing that, you know, things could go however they were going to go and I had to be okay with it. Like... I could still, you know, fight for what I wanted, like I could still, you know, deny pain meds or an epidural or whatever, um, but things that were medically necessary at the time, like, those are things that I look back on that I'm kind of bummed about, but it, it was necessary, so it's, I'm not actually upset about it. So, yeah, and you were happy about it too, huh? Sorry if you can just see his little feet, but this is the only thing keeping him quiet, so. Okay, so then after that, that kind of took a while. I was just kind of sitting there, just hanging out, leaking fluid, having contractions. Um, yeah, and so four hours went by and then it was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock and they were like, okay, let's see if you've, you know, gotten anywhere. And so I was three centimeters at that time. And then I finally, like I said, I was off everything, so I kept trying the birthing ball and changing positions. I had to keep, like, switching positions, and then every time that his heart rate would drop in a certain position, the nurse would come in and I would have to do something else. So, he was, he was a very stubborn little guy in there. He, he didn't want me to be in certain positions, so I had to just keep moving around, laying on different sides, um, standing, sitting, you know, whatever I could do to try and cope with the pain while also making sure that um, he was still comfortable inside. And honestly, that happened for a really, like, a long time, like, hours of really doing nothing. Um, I wish I had done some things differently, like utilize the shower maybe, just to cope with the pain better, because it was pretty, it was pretty bad. And I had really, really bad back labor. Um, and so I think we did use, I, I took the um, Mama Natural Birth course and did that online 
well, I, I got through a couple of the classes, but I also used her um, week by week pregnancy book, and so she has this like tennis ball massager that she makes, and so I made one of those and I used that for a little bit. Um, but for the most part, I realized that like I definitely internalized the pain. I didn't want anyone touching me. I didn't really want a lot of loud noises. Like I just needed to kind of like really dig deep in those moments that I was having a contraction. And then once it was over, it was like <sighs> like a breath of fresh air. You're like, okay, that's the peak. Now it's coming down. It's fine. We're fine. Everything is good. So eventually um, a few more hours pass and I get to six centimeters and um, things started getting real, like real, real quick. Um, it was, it was pretty painful, not going to lie, there's, there's no sugar coating this experience. Even though it's, it's super hard, it's, it's definitely worth it and um, I got to six centimeters and my contractions got so bad and um, he was super engaged. I remember I was feeling like some pretty intense pelvic pressure. Um, again, I wasn't moving very much, so I think just laying on the bed makes it so much worse because you're not actually like actively doing something to distract yourself. Um, something that I found that helped was in changing where your focus is. So like I would look at the TV and then I would look at the chair and then I would look at my husband and then look at the nurse or look at the monitor and the more you like shift your focus, um, the more you're like unable to really focus on that pain and honestly like that helped a lot I didn't do it very much but it definitely helped in the moments that I did do it yeah from here on out like things progressed pretty quick so when I first came in there was an OB and then after he left there was a midwife and so I was kind of excited that it was a midwife and I met her and she was so sweet and so nice and super funny and I knew that like I wanted her to birth my baby but she was off work at 715 that night so if I wanted her to birth this baby it would have to be pretty quick so I was extremely determined to get this baby out and I was hopeful that he would cooperate with that plan my contractions were like crazy long and super close together at this point like super close together like they would not give up like it was like a minute, a minute and a half long contraction with like 10 second break and then it was back to the next one and I was dying. And eventually I started asking for um, minor pain medication of any kind. I was like, I don't care if it's some extra strength Tylenol, just something. Like don't give me anything crazy, like I don't want an epidural, but just like something to take the edge off. And so I kept telling my husband, I was like, I'm dying, please. I'm not going to be mad about it. I know this is just the pain talking, but like, I need to get through this and I need some help. Like, I totally, totally caved. And that is, it's, it's okay. Like, it's totally fine. Like, I think it's something that everyone does, especially when they start hitting transition. Um, once you get to that point where you're in active labor and your body's working super hard and your body's getting ready to get towards that pushing phase, it's like, it's go time, but it's like, you want to quit. <laughs> Um, so then I kept telling him and he would be like, oh yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'll, I'll go tell the nurse. And I'm like, okay, okay. So then I'm, you know, distracted, trying to deal with myself, and like an hour passes, another hour passes, and I'm like, dude, where's my pain meds? So eventually, and I, I think it's because he knew I really, really wanted to do it unmedicated. Like, I just had researched so much about just the benefits of doing it unmedicated. Um, and so he he really pushed me to stay strong in that and like there's totally nothing wrong with getting an epidural and you know doing whatever it is you want to do to get through it because um, labor and delivery is no joke like it's hard and so if you want to bypass all of that like I totally get it like that is every mom's choice to figure out for herself um, I just knew for me personally I wanted to do it because I truly believe that like my body is made to do this I can do this so about 6 o'clock or 6.15, I was, I was done, like 6 o'clock came around and I was, I was done. I was in so much pain, I could not believe this was happening, like I was ready to be like, suck that baby back in, we are done, we are not doing this today, let's just, we'll sleep on it and we'll do it on a different day. And so I told my nurse finally, I was like, nurse, get me some drugs, like do something about this pain for me. 
Um, I still wasn't, you know, at the point that I wanted an epidural or anything, but like I needed something to help because I was crashing fast. Like I was going down, this is it, I was done, I had reached my mental breaking point. So then she was like, oh, okay, um, let me go talk to your midwife really quick. And I was like, whatever you gotta do, you do it, you come back here, you hook me up, and we're good. <laughs> so she came back and then in comes my midwife and she's like strapping the gloves on and she's like, girl, let's do this. And I was like, oh gosh, let's do what? And so she checked me and I was eight centimeters. She ended up being exactly what I needed. She was, she was go-getter. She was like, you want a natural birth? We're doing this. We are going to do 100% unmedicated. You got this girl, let's go. And so I was like, I hate you. <laughs> and so um, she ended up helping me stretch to 10 centimeters. Not really sure what that entailed because at that point in time, I didn't really care what she did. It's like, I can do this, but you know, whatever else you've got to do, if you got to help me stretch it out, you knock yourself out. So I was stretched out to 10 centimeters and then we got to the time to push. This was the worst, like, 20 minutes of my life. Those of you who had longer pushing times, please don't hate me. I'm pushing and I was going to start pushing on all fours and I hated being in that position for some reason. Like it felt so vulnerable and like uncomfortable. Like somehow the baby was just gonna like fall out and or something, I don't know. Something weird like that, like I just wasn't comfortable and I, I wasn't sure what I was going to like. But um, they were like, you know what, just go on your back, let's see if you like that better. And this angel of a midwife woman gave me an ice pack for my back. And literally my back labor like disappeared. Anyway, we're pushing and I, this part is very vague for me, I think because it's, it was the hardest part. It was the hardest part. But it's okay, you did so good. Um, yeah, if you ask my husband, he said that I pushed like eight times and I was done. Um, if you ask me how the experience went, like, he said it was like 20 minutes and that was it. I'm like, it was like hours of agony. Um, just because it felt, I just, I wanted to give up. Like, I was not, I was not ready to push this baby out of my body. Like, that was something that I was like, nope. Pack your things up, ladies. We are done for today. We can talk about this tomorrow. And the midwife, she was so awesome because she was so stern and so like, get it together, girl, get it together. And I needed that. I really needed someone who was going to like kick my butt and tell me to just do it. Like suck it up, buttercup, push this baby out. Like I know you can and just be done. Because um, if I had had someone sweet and nice who's like, honey, you're doing okay. You're doing great. Like I, there was no way that that would have happened. So as harsh as it sounded at the moment, I was so grateful for it. I had to like mentally get to that point where I was like, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. Okay, let's do this. Like, let's just buckle up, push this baby out as best you can, and then you're done. And so, um, also my husband's an EMT, and so like he really, really wanted to help deliver this baby. And the midwife was like, I mean, I'll let you do it. I don't know if the next doctor will let you do it, but I'll let you do it. So when I got his big old head out <laughs> um, and then finally like past his shoulders, the midwife looked at my husband and was like, well, take the baby. And he was like, what, are you serious? And so he got to pull the baby the rest of the way out. I mean, like obviously I helped him, but like he got to like bring him out and put him on my belly. And um, yeah, it was, it was honestly like, the coolest moment because once the baby is out it's like you have some sort of crazy hormonal like endorphin rush where you're like oh, yes this is awesome this is done it feels so good like you don't feel really like any pain or anything at least I didn't um yeah and then I just had my baby on my on my chest and he just laid with me for a while and he was pretty blue and so they were, you know, rubbing him and stuff and then he finally cried. Did a good job crying, huh? Um, and yeah, and then he was born. He was born at 18.9 inches and 7 pounds, 5 ounces. So even though he was technically three weeks early, he was still a pretty good sized baby. Yeah, so I ended up getting 
all the things that I kind of wanted where I wanted to do delayed cord clamping. I didn't want him to have a bath right away or anything. Um, I wanted him to be able to have a lot of skin-to-skin -skin contact for the first hour or two. For the first hour or two? You were such a little peanut! Yeah! A little peanut! I was, I was really impressed with that and that like most of the things that I wanted on my birth plan I was able to get. As far as like the aftermath kind of stuff. Can you say hi to everyone? That is my birth story. That is your birth story. And um, he has done super well. And we started breastfeeding in the hospital. And that's a whole other journey that we will make a video about because... Yeah, because it's a journey. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'm going to be making a ton more videos, hopefully. We'll see if we can do it without as much crying. Huh. You just woke up, though. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. But yeah. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? You want to say hi? Ooh.